Next, we have the superintendent's update. So we want to start with ongoing personnel investigations. Um, the investigations are not complete. We are committed to a fair and thorough investigation, and there's no additional information at this time. Uh, please know that those of you who are going to Thank you. 
How you like us now? Until this week, I never understood why. Now I think I may know the answer. 
I published the results of an extensive investigation I undertook, and school officials made it clear they had no intention of a look back at what the district attorney later charged as attempted murder, the stabbing of a student in the high school. That investigation revealed that no one at the high school called 911. Why did no one call 911 after a student was stabbed twice in the torso, both wounds puncturing organs, so that the student was bleeding to death? The answer is that the medical director ordered her staff not to call 911. I want to say that again. The medical director ordered her staff not to call 911. This student was left unattended while bleeding out for more than 20 minutes because rather than follow the board approved security protocol to dial 911 and call paramedics to the scene, the, paramed the medical director instead ordered the staff to call the child's grandmother and ask the grandmother to come to the school to take the child off school grounds. I can only draw the conclusion that the unprecedented decision not to investigate the circumstances of January 18, 2018 was an effort by certain board members to protect an incompetent medical director who would certainly have been fired had a formal investigation took place. Our medical director should have been fired that day, but not before she was reported to the state medical board to consider revoking her medical license. Having left a child to die on a couch in her office, it is beyond belief to think that a person who should have been fired long ago would have orchestrated recent events. This board should be terminating someone, but it's not Coach B. capricious manner in which important policies are altogether ignored and seemingly innocuous regulations are enforced with an iron fist is a result of the tyrannical leadership of this board. The inappropriate hiring of a superintendent who clings to an anti-black lawsuit comes from a most segregated school district in the nation and has a reputation of hostility towards teachers in their union is a result of the tyrannical leadership of this board. Yeah. This leadership, without regard for due process or fairness, have attacked and besmirched the character of a Hall of Fame coach That's right. that has shown nothing but love and devotion to young people for decades, in particular right. black young men personal relationship and their willfully engaging in personal vendettas has created a hostile environment where fear of retribution reigns supreme. This irresponsible and destructive leadership has left our district in a shambles. It has put our kids in a disadvantage. It has demoralized our community and it has brought shame to our city. I am here tonight to stand up and declare that this de tyrannical destructive reign must end. It is time for this leadership to resign. And if we hope, if we hope to get it back in line, this leadership has to resign. And also, I add Joni to the young student whose safety he sought to ensure. I've been an educator for over 40 years and a principal for 20 of those years. So I understand fully the responsibilities of the school district, superintendent, administrators, teachers, and staff. Sadly, this district and superintendent have failed this community and its students. As you have heard by now from thousands of people in this community, young and old, my brother is revered as a leader and role model for his students. Because of his actions as well as his words, he teaches integrity, morality, hard work, ethics, and honesty. That's right. Yep. Whether with malice or with reckless disregard, 
You, Superintendent Fiju, and New Rochelle Board of Education have done the opposite. That's right. The damaging effect, not only on my brother and our family, but on the students yes. and the community is the same either way. Instead of together is better, as your own slogan indicates, here is what you are teaching by your actions. Savage a man's reputation with impunity. Trample on due process rights. Intimidate, intimidate teachers, administrators, and staff by disregard and disrespect. Ignore, ignore the community with whom you claim to want to work together. And above all, you lack the courage to admit you may have a personal situation in a most appropriate fashion. But you know, you have a chance tonight to at least begin the road to healing if you take a page from my brother's playbook. Acknowledge that there is a better way to proceed and seek to do so by inclusion and consideration of the legitimate points raised by this community. Together is Better, Together is better has been visible here at New Rochelle High School in many ways these 29 years. So I urge you, Dr. Fishu and Nourishell Board of Education, create of this fiasco a teachable moment, just as my brother has done day in and day out for the duration of his tenure, for the good of the children that you educate and protect. ALMS for 34 years and I have never felt this before. I have watched as this board and now superintendent with the aid and direction of their new attorneys create increasing disruption, chaos, and the destruction of collegiality and trust. They have brought shame and dishonor to our schools. As educators, our jobs are about moving children forward, supporting them both socially, academically, and emotionally. We try to demonstrate what respect and fair treatment look like in our classrooms each and every day. Now, sadly, our students have witnessed the exact opposite of fair treatment and respect. They have witnessed both in writing and at an ill-conceived press conference, bullying, public humiliation, yeah. gossip, yes. and innuendo. Yes. These are the examples the district leadership has demonstrated for the children of our community. While my children yes. attended school, I was a member of our local school board for serving for 18 years. I am very familiar with policies and protocols. This public shaming of, and humiliation of dedicated professionals or the disgraceful lack of concern for the dignity of the minor involved has never been done in Westchester, Club Putnam, Rockland, or in any other district I know of. I have spoken with several superintendents who have shared that they have tried and or will be trying to contact that Dr. Bayo to share with her their concerns and frankly outrage at her She's actions. Fineless. Fuse respects the district's responsibility to investigate any allegation or possible violation of protocols that's brought forward. Simultaneously, we expect that the privacy of the accused is respected before the investigation moves forward. The release of names and an unnecessary and, in, and inflammatory press conference makes them publicly vulnerable and defames their character unnecessarily. Right. Playing fast and loose with due process and only hurts Nourishell and the children who live and learn here. It creates a toxic climate. Who would choose to come to a district where there's no due process, 
Who would choose to work where they would, could be publicly shamed at any time for any reason before anyone even bothers to interview them? There needs to be a return. There needs to be a return to a more thoughtful policy. Our community does not need to be informed as to the reasons why a teacher may be absent from class. Teachers get sick. They have family tragedies. They may be absent for a time. Of course people will be curious, but that curiosity does not need to be indulged. Curiosity is a right to people's personal information. educational values they learned were a lifelong love of learning, curiosity, careful research, exercise of analytical skills, working on with history, cultural awareness, and empathy. Um, all things I, I think have been sadly missing in, in your decisions with regard to uh, this hire and its aftermath. How could you know the true history of the United States in general? and of Nourishel race relations in particular, I still believe this was the right hire for our district. Mm -hmm. How could you hear beloved and respected clergy and other leaders of black and brown communities here condemn this hire and still think you did the right thing? Right. Did you all read the numerous articles we had on the 400th anniversary of, of the history of uh, Africans in this country? from their slavery through mass incarceration. Stuff we didn't really learn about in our days growing up. How could you read the history of the civil rights legislation of the 1960s and still believe that the bloodshed of those laws was for the use of an entitled, well-compensated, white administrator to sue for promotion by an employer trying to encourage creating the diversity that we saw, the diversity that the civil rights movement was all about. I plead with you, please, please, Thank you. this is history. Next is Ms. We must make the conclusion that this Thank is Thank you very much, Mr. Barber. Thank you. Um, this is
This is some yeah. political that was Listen, I have Bob Cox. I have Bob Cox. We understand where you are right now. We understand where you are right now. We understand where you are right now. That's an excuse. And what we should have done really? is to talk to Coach D. It's my fault. And talk about what happened. Right. It's all yours. And move forward. Whatever teaching moment it needed to be, we had 30 years of data and facts that we know about. I look forward. I look forward. I look forward. I agree with you. This is why you're not. He's the best. We I'm a fan of Coach D. I know. But we have to wait for the facts no, to come out. Been, I am not at liberty to share them. We lynch Shadia. She didn't do no. shit but He's help right. this district. Yeah. Everybody yeah. who helps this district is the ones we go after. That's what, those are the people we've been I can only out tell you, district. my experience With, on the board up to this point, nobody's going after anybody. Shadia. It might, it might appear it's that way. Shadia. Appear that went way after to her you. for no reason. And that's all I can say. That was me. <laughs> so they just conference for a minute because I think that that question is a very valid question and I just don't think it's been answered in a clear enough way. Definitely calling a press conference to say I don't have much to say about anything makes no sense and so that's actually not what happened. The night before, when we wrote that letter and sent the letter out about Coach D, before the letter ever went out, we started getting contacted by the press because Coach D not being in practice is not a small little thing and it didn't go unnoticed. And there were, you know, people who were beginning to believe that they understood what might or might not have happened with the Coach D, which I can't confirm or not. So, when we were in contact with the press, they were saying that it was their intention to go to the high school to interview students and to be present at the high school in the morning. The superintendent's uh, idea was that that was not the best way to protect the students, that it was not a good idea to have a whole bunch of press at the high school. And so rather than doing that, she met with the three assistant coaches and Coach Krabby the night before mm -hmm. in uh, Mr. Servais' office. I was there. They were clearly very unhappy. Uh, about what had happened, and they did not come in any way to demonstrate support for what happened, but rather for support for the students, which I really respected. We talked to them about what we might want to do to take the, uh, the emphasis and the press away from the high school and maybe Who's to central administration so that the kids can Where's go to school in a safe and nurturing environment. They were going to come and be with Dr. Fejo when the press conference happened, not to at all demonstrate solidarity with the decision because they made it very clear they do not support the decision and that they are in full support of Coach D. That was clear. But what they wanted to do is say, listen, our kids are going to be suffering from an extreme stress. The loss of Coach D during this very critical time is a very difficult thing for these students. We want to demonstrate that we are here for them. Clearly, Dr. Fejo doesn't know the students. The board doesn't know the students. People don't have faith in her or in us. It's not about the students. It's not about the Correct. Their education is on the line right now, and they have to come back from that and bouncing back from misstudies so that they may not feel like it's their degree. So we're not bouncing from hope. There's a voice habit. It's hard. We have to take on that same approach. It's about their education. So the longer they're in distraught and distress, their education is affected. I, I think that's a very valid point. So what, what, what I want as a parent, I would like to know how are they going to bounce back after two or three weeks, let's say, of, of homework study. That's what I'd like to know. I mean, that's a very, very good question. Right, so I, that's, I want that answered as, as, as a son in the high school, as a senior in the high school. That is struggling. So I think that that's a very serious question. And I, and I because I'm not, uh, I'm not an administrator in the building and I'm not a teacher, um, but you're part of the board. So we're a part of the answer. board. What we've been told, and I certainly can get much more information for um, you know parents that are concerned, is that there are supports in the high school that have been put into place, maybe not effectively, that provides counseling, that guidance. But yes, it is. So fast, we can put things in place that so, fast. Okay. As far as students, well, that's what we're I mean, apparently, yeah. apparently, well, according to what I understood, that that was actually happening, and that students knew who to go to. It was one of the reasons, also, that we brought in um, uh, Coach Young or Coach happy because he doesn't have anything to do with football but that he's the next season and that there are some students that feel um, very comfortable talking to him. The idea was to create a network, a village around the students to help support them. I have not. I have not. And Krabby wants nothing to do with it. I, I, I do not. I did not know that. But well, his feeling is that you're using a number black face okay. to prop you up. Okay, that's so his we, feeling. So we do that's not, his feeling. Okay. You're putting a number black face before. That's, so to say I, this is not racism, see, we're talking to a knight. This is the old boy network. We used to be. See, you have to walk in my skin. I'm a black man. 
and we read you differently than what you think we do. And we see, we see through the prism of our own eyes. We know what racism looks like. We know what it looks like. To, and to force her to stand up and say, we're still investigating after seven days. This is a minor, whatever it is. It's seven days. You, you're, you're trying to, what my feeling is you're trying to prolong this. Yeah. You're going to prolong it till next week, forget next week. And if we get, if we're fortunate, if we're fortunate. See, we were warm by the skin of our teeth the other night. We didn't play good at all. I want, I want you to know that. We played terrible. We, we just won that game by the skin of our teeth. Now we're going back to middle time. We're going back to middle time without the coach and whatever happens here you're prolonging it a little longer but i tell you this and i'm not a prophet on this but i'm telling you saturday we gotta struggle we gonna struggle louis has not louis has not attended he has not attended to these kids he's not done anything they have his voice in their head that's who they hear not the other coaches, they're fine. They're fine. But it's very stressful. I just want you to know that. But I thank you for your attention. I thank you for I thank you for stopping. I really do. Everybody else is running to the room. No, 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 no. I don't want you to think that. Yes, they have. I'll just say that the board only, that the board's spokesperson is the board president. But the board is a governing body. It is. When has that changed? It's a governing body. Yes, the, the, you are doing, or you have picked up the mantle of what's going on in this country. Everybody's guilty. Any any other school district would not have handled this. You, you, you cannot. I, 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 work, I work in a different school district. We would not have handled this. Totally blown out of proportion. To provide information. So, and so what's happening right now is that all we're saying is we're going to do it when we want to. And that's what we're hearing. No, so so that I, might just, I just wanted to, I I want, want, I want nobody you, wants this. I want you to hear me. Yeah. It's not what we I want. want. You, I want you to hear me instead of responding. Don't wait for your return to respond. Hear me. What is happening is there's no answers. There's no information. There is nothing that is saying this is what we're doing. All we're saying is we're doing it as fast as we can, as slow as we must. We're doing Words. it as, as we're doing it fair. We're following a process as expeditiously as we can. Those are all. And, you know, and so, at the end of the day, you know, regardless of what that process is, you should be able to come back to us and say, "Hey, we are not the ones who have to do this." And this is what we're doing to try to expedite their process, right? Because then there is at least some understanding. With all that I'm getting, get understanding. We don't understand what's going on. Also, These this is not what you're saying. This is not what you want. But or, going the longer on. this goes on, are you going to be able to say we made a mistake? We're sorry. Are you? Are, are, is that ever going to happen? Or and the longer it goes on, the harder that gets. So I, I will say, I will say that the Board of Education definitely has a long-standing uh, relationship with you that we are committed to making sure is right. And there were um, some members of Hughes that was rec that were recommending that you know we get together in a room and sort of sort out. Why wasn't that done already? So, it wasn't so actually, the superintendent of schools has contacted Marty Daly, contacted Marty Daly today. But you know, obviously, some relationships take, take some time to build, and I do believe that uh, we will make progress with Hughes. But when it comes to answers, and the frustrating thing is that we don't have the ability to share answers. We are very limited in what we can say, but we, in terms of the process. I do think it's important for people to know that the Board of Education does not run the investigation. I get that. We are, we are what, asking what, for the conclusion. But your of answers are not effective. What you're, you're not saying that to the public. You're not saying that to the press. You're not saying that to these students. Has anyone gone in and talked to these my no. son's a captain. I can say that. My, no. my son is How about having a tennis Listen, I, I, no. I, I, that, that question was rhetorical because my son is a captain on that football team. And my son is out there trying to get his team to keep moving forward. My son is very quiet. My very, He has a quiet demeanor. He, he is known to have a quiet confidence, right? That's what they say. I didn't make that up. That's what other people say about me. However, he has to go in and what I told my son is make sure your team's okay. 
make sure that what Coach D has put into you, that you give back to your team. Be a leader. And you guys have a responsibility to be the leaders in this community and a leader of that. You are the leader of that board. And you have a responsibility to this community. I'm, this is bigger than football. Yeah, that's right. And so, while, yes, I want my son to go to the Dome and bring back, guess what? My son is being recruited right now. And he doesn't have his, coach. Doesn't have his coach. The person who sits down with me and him on his own time to go through everything and make sure that he's doing what he's supposed to do, not on the field, in the classroom, he's a senior. in the community. He's a senior. So there's a lot he's never going to get that back have, again. Ever. You, have, you have a duty. You have a duty. But he'll never be a senior again. You're taking that away from him. These are, this is, Disgrace. my son just played his last home game at the High School. My son just played his last section playoff game for New Rochelle High School. My son just played the last regional playoff game for New Rochelle High School. And these things are happening without his coach. And while Coach D will always be in their hearts, you guys have a responsibility and a duty to provide them with information and whatever you can. And I'm not, I understand as a leader, there are certain things that you cannot disclose, but you have a responsibility and a duty to these kids and this community I am listening. I am listening. to make sure that whatever information can be shared that's not fluffing nonsense that you share that because I don't need anybody to blow smoke up my butt I don't what can we provide that's not fluffing you think that the students would be interested in knowing sort of like the process of what the board does versus everybody would be interested in knowing the what the process is you guys to at least come to this and talk to us we're just so confused it's actually sad y'all should be ashamed of all of y'all selves it's actually sad. It's sad for the community. It's sad for the football players. I have football players in every single class. They're all going off track because they cannot stop thinking about their coach. I had to take my son to a doctor's appointment this morning. The doctor asked him, what's going on? And he just sat there and shrugged because he doesn't know. There's no information. Or he can't verbalize it. What? No, he what's, can verbalize it very well. He's very articulate. He just doesn't have any, there's nothing to tell. But what's the recourse? What's the recourse after a coach has, has trained you to execute a certain way that's so proficient in what he does that he keeps you from going in harm's way. He's the only one that does that. He's the only one that stands there on the sideline mm -hmm. and protects him from the dangers out there. He says, be careful of this. Look at this. He looks at everything. Here's a mother. We're not doing Here's a, a mother star of a star player. If he goes out on that field, he's depending on the, the voice of the coach to tell him, this is why we're not going to do it this way. We're going to do it that way. If her, sons get, if her son gets injured on that field because he's there using secondary coaches because he, the coach is not out there, which could have been prevented, and then fault is that? He, loses, he loses a full scholarship and probably his whole career because of some foolish decision. That should have been handled in-house, in, in the principal's office. Any school district would have handled it in-house. It has never risen in to this that it wouldn't have been risen, that it hadn't been handled in school. As Mr. Bachman, I've been up here for over 50 years, and I've seen the way principals handle things. Mm -hmm. This was very shabby. It was one very unethical for people to go, at, go out and do what she did. And if you look at all her memos, really carefully, sit down and look at it, and look at some of the stuff that she posted, you'd ask, my God, she's speaking for us. This is the job that we're supposed to be doing, and we got her out there. Now, there it is a common knowledge in New Rochelle right now, and they call it, they call it Three Stooges. There's Three Stooges. That's all affected in this whole thing. We, you and I will talk about the three stooges, when I call them, okay. that are all responsible for what goes down here. And we're going to hold everybody responsible. You talking about your budget next year? You're going to have a, a hard time, a hard time, because this is not going to go away. Like what you never said, it's not about football anymore. This is the concern of our children. And I'm concerned. I'm concerned because I'm a black man and I've seen this act before. I've seen it. And I'm concerned. And you, and you go out and you go out and you hang a man. 
and you give no good, reason. But I just want to say that, that good, there, there's not there's student. not been a, a conclusion to the, any investigation. There's not been any conclusion. Yeah, but you're holding well, him from his job. Well, why put his name out there? You took his name out there. 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 He's got two more he games to go. You could have said, finish up the season. We will have this on the season. Like he, he, was he, was he was held in high regard, and you put his name out there. You put him on front street. Let them do it. You see them break down and cry. You go and pick them up. We you don't leave them every week. The you don't put clothes on their back. You don't know more. what some of these kids don't even have a home. They don't have people sticking up for them. You're doing them wrong. Their only hope is him. You can make this executive decision, and you know you can. You could go against her. We wasted more money. Doors that were put in, they don't work. New locks to replace the locks. We spent millions of dollars. Pay her out her contract. A million dollars. Who cares at this point? We've lost a lot more money in this, this community. Get rid of her. You're causing community divide. You're hurting the kids. When you're starting to forget the adults, when you're hurting the kids, it's bad. You're not in that school. You don't care. You're not there. You don't hear them. You haven't seen them. Have you made sure they got help? Have you made sure they seen counselors? Have you? Have you? Have you? But have you done it? Okay. So we're we're quick to send the letter, but we're not worried about how that's going to really affect the kids. It affects the kids. We're here for the kids. And it's not only about the football team. How about it's the girl sitting next to my son, the boy in front of him? What about it's somebody that makes it in paid programs making a sign for them? You affected the community. You have affected the student body. You haven't seen them cry. You don't know what they're doing. You should be afraid of what they're doing to themselves. You should be afraid. They've got two games left. They need that man there tomorrow morning. Make an executive decision. Make it. I have to say that I have one vote on the board. It would not be my decision. And you got that. Your vote needs to be heard. Your vote needs to be heard. What I want to say is that if you want to hear my honest opinion about this, we don't need to hear it. We just want your vote. I want to hear this opinion. I want to hear this opinion. And, you know, from the board's perspective, before any decision can ever be made about any employee matter, the, an investigation needs to be completed so that we can be we, fulfilling our fiduciary responsibility. Fulfill your that's fiduciary a good, that's a responsibility, a but why did you put the man's name out there on front street? I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard the excuse that, oh, well, he wasn't going to show up for the game and people were going to have a lot of questions. And so we decided to hold a press conference. Okay, if that's true, why was the second man's name out there? I understand, maybe, about the first one. What about the second one? What about the second What about the second person being dragged out in the public and their reputation besmirched? See, that's just, just, just excuses, and it was a shame. And he's an honorable person. He's helped a lot of people. I don't want to put people's business out on the street. I don't want to put people's business out on the street, but I know lots of people who only graduated because of the help and the assistance of Coach D. And a lot of people, like I said at the podium, get in their hybrids. They get in their hybrids and drive off to their Levitt Capes in the sky. And he was, he stayed late, helped people, and it's a shame that somebody who was as honest and and, and who had such the integrity and and really helped the community that he had to be dragged out. His name had to be dragged out in public, so and he, like like he had done something so terrible. It's a shame. So, to have half the integrity that Coach D has. I'm talking about, you're, you're talking about the most solid citizen you could ever pull out of this pool. Coach D, honestly, honestly, my son is a third generation Minnesota football player. Okay? The pressure he puts on himself to get this done, for him, his brothers, teammates, and Coach D is unimaginable. You know what I'm saying? So you got to think about the kids. You, you got to think about the kids. I believe he loved him. I was the inspired. No question about that. That teacher is. I understand. The teacher is a person who inspires. I'm going to tell you this. Our community deserves a good reputation. You have to change the tone of your responses. 
because I have been quiet. I have not said one word on this issue the entire time because your words and your tone in your written communication has been offensive. Like and your like words? A Fortune 500 I, company. I, 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 no, I really, really want to hear this feedback. Can, can you please email me and tell me what you don't like about it so I can? I, I, I absolutely will okay. because I will tell you how I read it. Please. And what the undertone said to me. Please, because it's unintended. It's unintended. So please. But so, even tonight, when people were talking, you were talking with uh, the superintendent. You weren't really listening to what we didn't feel that you were listening to what people were saying. I so was. that gave the feeling that you really didn't care about what people had to say. You, you were talking to her, you were passing notes. It, it just, you look like you were and uninterested. And the people up there, they're just, you make, they're just making the people more angry by the way they look at us. They huff and puff like they don't want to hear what anybody has to say. That is rude. Because then y'all say, oh, be respectful. Be respectful. But look, when we're talking, when we speak, everybody's just like, I think, I think, I think, I think, I do, I do, I do, no, no, that, but that, the, the problem with that, honestly, is that once you set a precedence of not being really firm, then you, then it can become a legal issue when you start to break and choose. But, so you, we have to be very firm. I, whenever I have any but leverage, well, that's because, because, because no, no, what, 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 I mean, I was trying to be super differential, dear sister. But also, you... I mean, that's me. The person that yeah, I did. That's exactly what I gave 15 seconds to, yeah. But so when you were doing here with all the data and all that stuff, you were making yeah. yeah. so stories. But I just want I just want you to hear that the board does care. And, and, and we do, yes. Yeah. No, okay. If you care, say you care. Don't say no. I, I, I can tell you because I, was, I know the board. And we don't agree about a lot of things on the board. But the board does care. They are united. And they need care. They are. 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 I think it doesn't look like the board doesn't care. If you say you care, you need to say that just for yourself. Say, I care. You don't have to. You don't have to. I'm like, I'm sorry. I mean, I've heard it. I mean, it's amazing. Okay, come on. All right, let's go. Let's go. One you that I've never seen. All right, I'm sorry. All right, thank you, Mr. Gore. I know that you so me, you know. Oh, we're not friends, Amy. I just don't believe in what you've done. We will find common ground.